Hey there. You know, after we're all gone, our lives will ultimately just be a story that our friends and family tell. I heard one time that all stories, whether they're fiction or nonfiction, is really, are they gonna be either an inspiration or a warning? So I'd like to tell you a little story about uh, my mother, Pam Z. And um, hopefully it, it'd either be inspirational or, or a warning. Um, my mother was born in um, 1945 in Long Beach, California. And uh, her parents uh, were, were the upper middle class. Um, eventually uh, they, they moved to, to Las Vegas. And uh, my grandpa, I believe, owned a radio station. My grandma was uh, one of the higher up executives of, a, of the gas company there. And um, they were pretty well off. Um, we also had some family uh, that owned some land on the strip. And um, um, so that, uh, you know, I had some, some rich relatives, or what I consider rich at the time. <laughs> but. Um, unfortunately, um, I didn't grow up rich. I, I didn't. I was, <laughs> we're Po, right? We're. <laughs> that's what happens when you're you're so poor that you can't even afford the other OR. <laughs> we're Po. And um, my mother was, uh, I think, really. If you knew her, you know she was really superstitious and and believed in luck. She believed in a, a lot of luck. Uh, in fact, she uh, you know she believed in wishing on a star, making, um, you know, wishing wells and wishbones. She, uh, she believed in four-leaf clovers and lucky rabbit's feet. <laughs> She's also very superstitious. Uh, God forbid she ever break a mirror. She believed that you get seven years of bad luck. If she spilt salt, she always threw it over her shoulder. Um, never let a black cat cross her path and never walked underneath a ladder, <laughs> right? Those things, she knew them all, and uh, she, she would always uh, tell me, you know, I, was, I just remember growing up and always hearing them all. And um, she, uh, she believed that uh, like success um, what was, was just uh, in your destiny or uh, you were just lucky. Like, uh, she saw people that were rich and famous, and she, uh, I don't think she realized what kind of work was involved to get that way. And um, so she, uh, she, she, she really uh, went, I'm trying a couple of words, but she, uh, she, was, she didn't really have a career. She, she did go to, to, uh, to beauty school, so she, um, she, she cut hair, but she didn't really do that for a living. She just went from uh, one job or another, uh, being like a cashier, maid. She worked at a toy store, candy store in Vegas. Um, I remember her working at like a gas station or um, cleaning rooms and just uh, just all different. Uh, working at restaurants, um, she worked at um, uh, like a cocktail waitress and and uh, all, all, all sorts of things. But um, I don't want to get too deep into the uh, into uh, or the details of, of her life, but mainly, I feel like uh, she. Um, she she had a lot of habits and made a lot of bad decisions that really affected not only the direction of her life and how it how it ended up, but or the ultimate destiny. And unfortunately, um, you know, I, I went through a lot of lack, a lot of hard times because of, because of that. Uh, she um, ended up. Uh, we ended up moving to California, and uh, it actually just it was harder on us then because it, it went from kind of a, the, the pot to the fire kind of thing, where uh, it was cheaper in Vegas, and then it was more expensive in in California. Um, she had three kids with her. She had, uh, through her life, she had four kids, but three kids were there, and uh, just accepting like a government assistance and donations all the time. So. She, well, she had, uh, we had welfare, we had um, food stamps, and um, we ended up becoming homeless. Uh, when we first moved to California, we actually had to go uh, into like a, a shelter. Um, 
for a little while, and then uh, we, we lived in like motels, and um, one of the places we were at got a, um, condemned because of the wiring, because it was so old. Um, we ended up living in like a, uh, a storage unit for a little while. We would live with friends. Um, and the place, I, I had a bedroom that was a van for months. <laughs> so it was pretty tough, pretty tough. But, um, so she, she, had this, she had these addictions. Um, uh, she, she did some drugs, uh, you know, weed, uh, smoked cigarettes. And one of the things that I noticed that she did a lot was watched a lot of TV. Um, these are all just forms of self-gratification to you know, get the serotonin and the uh, dopamine, right? But, you know, she didn't know this. Um, but she, she was watched a lot of TV, uh, sometimes 24 hours a day. Uh, she always had the TV on. I remember one time I, I turned off the TV in the middle of the night because she was sleeping on the couch in the living room, which she did a lot. And uh, she, she would wake up and say, what are you doing? I said, I'm turning off the TV. You were asleep. She's like, no, I wasn't. I was, I was listening to it. Even, even if I'm sleeping, I'm still listening to it. So she watched a lot of TV. And, um, but here's something I, I don't, uh, a lot of people may not know uh, about, about me, that um, my mother, um, her, her aunt, married Jonathan Goldsmith. A lot of people don't know who that is. Uh, you might know him as the Dos Equis guy, most interesting man in the world, right? And uh, true story, he, he did uh, a lot of shows during the 80s. You know, I grew up in the 80s, and... Uh, There's a lot of different TV shows that he showed up on. Uh, I got you know, a list of them here. Uh, you guys may know some of these. Uh, Gunsmoke, Bonanza, Adam-12, Knight Rider, Chips, Eight is Enough, The Rockford Files, Hawaii Five-0, Barnaby Jones, MacGyver, Murder, She Wrote, Charlie's Angels, uh, The Fall Guy, Dynasty, TJ Hooker, um, Magnum P.I., Knott's Landing, The A-Team. I remember being on some other stuff, too. I think he was on, like, um, uh, like Matlock and uh, um, Columbo and, and stuff like that. These, all, all these kind of... Um, I, I don't think they, they, they... That was an exhausted list. I, I, I just remember him being on a lot of stuff. And it seemed like, on like a weekly basis, my mom would yell out because um, she watched a lot of TV. She'd be like, Uncle John was on TV. That's what she called him. I don't know if that was his name, you know, if anybody else called him that. <laughs> I don't, Uncle Jono was uh, what she called him. So like I said, weekly basis sometimes, multiple times a week, I would have to come out of doing whatever I was doing, probably playing with some Transformers or He-Man or something. And I'd go, oh, Uncle John was on TV again. I'd have to sit there and watch it. <laughs> uh, now, some of these shows I, I did watch, uh, like, uh, let's say, Knight Rider, um, MacGyver, A-Team, you know, those were all my shows. So I, I'd ever, every once in a while I'd go, Mom, Uncle John, I was on, on A-Team. <laughs> right, but um, it was cool, it was cool. Uh, you know, I, I would tell my friends, uh, nobody knew who he was, because I would say, uh, you know, Uncle John or Jonathan Goldsmith, because he wasn't very, very famous, but although he, he was working quite a bit in the 80s. And then, um, uh, in the in the it's a funny story in the 90s I uh, used to door to door I was still selling Kirby Kirby vacuum cleaners and one guy said uh, yeah I'll let you come in and, and pitch me your your vacuum cleaner as long as I can pitch you what I'm selling I said yeah sure whatever you know so um, we're, we're sitting at a table and he's uh, he's pitching me this thing called waterless car wash it was uh, uh, it was called a dry washing guard I think if, if I remember right. Uh, dry washing guard. He gives me a demo. He, he takes me out in his garage and he, and he, and he uses um, it on his cars. Back then, California was going through a drought, so uh, they were pushing the, the waterless car washes. And um, it was good stuff, actually. I, I liked it. And he was sitting there trying to sell me a, a, as either a salesperson or a distributor of this product. And uh, I looked down, and on, on one of the brochures is, uh, is my Uncle John now. <laughs> uh, just a picture of it. I was like, I'm like who is that? Uh, just because I knew who it was, but I just, you know, it was a weird picture, so I didn't know if it really was him. I mean, he's like, oh, that's Jonathan Goldsmith. You may have seen him on all these TV shows in the 80s. I'm like, yeah, I've, 
uh, tell me, I've seen him. I say, no, honestly, that's, uh, that's my Uncle Jono, my mom's Uncle Jono. And um, it kind of killed the sale for him because I was like, well, why am I gonna go through you when I can just go through my Uncle Jono? So I took the flyer home and showed my mom. And uh, it's just a you know, funny story that he was you know, all over the place to me. Um, and then, uh, you know, when he became the most interesting man, uh, Dos Equis, honestly, I didn't know at first. Uh, I, I moved away from my mother, and, uh, you know, it was years. And she's like, hey, uh, you know, did you know Uncle Jono? Did you know that was Uncle Jono? I'm like, oh, wow. I, yeah, it is. <laughs> so um, it's just funny, just funny. But I don't tell a lot of people that, uh, and, you know, I don't, not to drop names or anything like that. And, um, uh, the main thing uh, why I'm bringing this up is uh, I think uh, that she, she, she lived vicariously through the TV and through, through him, right? Not, not completely, but there, it was a big part of her life. And um, he, uh, not even knowing it, uh, it gave, gave her, he, he was, she was probably his biggest fan that he'll, he'll never know. All right, um, I, I've sent him a message before and to thank him, but uh, I never got any response. So he, he may never even see this either. So it's, it's not the point. Um, the, the point is that um, you know she she was very she's very proud of you, John, and uh, very proud that she can say, hey, that's my uncle Jono. Um, so she she loved that, and uh, like I said, she was a big biggest one of your biggest fans. Um, unfortunately, that her habits and and um, uh, you know bad decisions ultimately had a toll on her health and um, she had passed passing away in 2012 you know sh uh, shortly she she, um, she didn't she either died in her 60s early 60s so um, she's not with us anymore um, anyway so my I I've, I pulled two kind of important life lessons from that and um, Basically, the other thing is, is, is you don't have to be super rich and super famous to be successful. Um, you know, and, and that's like, if you look at the industry, at least the movie industry, the people that are, are super, super, uh, you know, what we call a, um, superstars, uh, you know, like Brad Pitt, Tom Cruise, and Don Z, you know, all those guys, um, this represents a very small percentage, like this less than 1%, right? There's so many people behind the scenes or even in the scenes, the extras, that don't get enough credit, right? Um, there's, uh, <laughs> you know, hundreds of thousands of people that, uh, that are good at what they do. And just because they're not famous doesn't mean they're not skillful or, or good and they don't get enough credit. Uh, it reminds me, I was on the street one time performing, uh, doing, uh, doing busking. And uh, this group of guys went by, and one of them said, ah, he, he must not be any good if he's on the street. Or, you know, the, in, implying that I'm not famous, so I must not be good. That, uh, don't, that's, don't have that belief, right? You can still be really, really successful and rich, and nobody ever know your name. So that's one of my life lessons that I got from Jonathan. Uh, he is, he is kind of well known, uh, if I tell you, you know, the most interesting man or the Dos Equis. You know him by that, but you probably don't know him by his real name, Jonathan Goldsmith, right? And, uh, but he's still a success, and not only in my eyes, but a lot of people. Uh, so that, that's, you know, I, that's why I pull from it. Uh, in my magic, right, I, uh, I can still be successful, do a lot of gigs, and, uh, you know, do really good magic, but you know, I don't have to be a household name like David Copperfield or Houdini or uh, Chris Angel or David Blaine, right? That's not uh, that's not my goal. I have a lot of people say, "Why aren't you on AGT or why don't you do Penn and Teller?" Well, it's not my goal is not to be super f famous. Um, I just uh, you know I, I think you should work hard and be consistent and and just be a good person. Measure your success uh, not by your own standards, not by other people's standards. And uh, you make your own luck. That's something my mom never really uh, believed in. She believed in, uh, you know, destiny and, and fate. But, uh, you know, she never learned that luck is labor under correct knowledge. Or uh, the more you work, or the harder you work, 
the luckier you, luckier you get. So I, I really believe that. But, you know, despite of my, my mom's life being uh, kind of a warning to me, um, she was successful in her own right, right? She, she was really good at um, having self-gratification, making, you know, finding things to be happy about and making herself feel good even in the moment. And she was successful and she raised four healthy kids that became, uh, you know, strong adults. So see what she had her own successes. Right? So don't, like I said, don't, uh, don't judge yourself or don't beat yourself up just because you're not successful. Right? And then to Jonathan, Jonathan, again, thank you from my mother. She didn't have a chance to thank you, but I, I think you really gave her a lot. Uh, like I said, uh, she was very proud that, uh, that, that you were her uncle. And like I said, I, I'm, the, I think the tragedy is that you may never know that, you know, that you lost a, your number one fan. So cheers to you, Jonathan. As you always say, stay thirsty, my friends. Thanks for watching.